Hello, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. I was born in San Diego, California in 1968, and I now live in Seattle, Washington, United States of America. And I'm an art model, a uh, full-time art model and full-time multimedia artist. Uh, I'm in my living room right now. I have a figure drawing session that's going to happen tonight, 6.45 p.m. to 9 p.m. I just did a video on that. It is now July 17, 2020. I just wanted to do a little bit of a video about some of my thoughts. I have a lot of controversial thoughts, and I don't want to say anything to get myself in trouble with people that are monitoring uh, the media that people like me create. Uh, I'm not sponsored by any multi-million dollar corporations, which will go unnamed. Uh, I'm a private individual, an artist, and I'm not wealthy. And I have a very inexpensive, frugal lifestyle, so I feel middle class, even though I am uh, considered on paper very low income, although I work really hard as an artist and a model. Um, my primary interest is in my health and my safety. And when I say that, I mean my financial health, my physical health, my emotional health. Um, so I'm not here to argue about the medical advice that we are being given. I'm not here to tell you anything other than please stay awake, please question everything, please uh, use common sense, and I would caution you to not just believe everything you hear, whether it's mainstream or alternative. I feed my cat a raw meat diet which only a naturopathic vet would recommend. A mainstream vet would tell me to feed my cat commercial pet food that has carbohydrates in it. And my cat is mildly diabetic. So if I followed the advice of a mainstream vet, I would be needing to inject my cat with insulin and prick his ear and make him bleed every day to check his blood sugar, which is fine if he was gonna put up with it. So to make a long story short, my cat's pee and poop is very healthy. My cat's uh, digestion is healthy. I have an orange fluffy cat named Kaysoon. I'm using his him as an example. Dr. Jason Fung is uh, a mainstream kidney specialist who has helped many obese and diabetic people um, need less medication and improve their health without necessarily needing surgery. Um, these are some examples of trailblazers. A lot of, sadly, a lot of the trailblazers that I admire are being banned and deleted and censored offline, and I hope I'm allowed to say those words. Um, so I'm being careful with what I say. My real opinions about a lot of things happening, I'm not allowed to say. I'm gagged. And that's really disturbing. Um, I'm a fan of free speech, and I'm a fan of democracy. And I'm a fan of people who are visionary thinkers and trailblazers and who are not afraid to question the status quo. I don't want to put myself in a place of getting banned, deleted, and censored and erased, and so uh, I'm being careful with what I say. Uh, let's just say that my I eat raw fermented food every day, probiotics, and um, I have learned a lot about nutrition and the immune system and health, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to say those words on here. Uh, I don't want things to be forced upon me medically. I won't say the words that are the buzzwords. I will not regurgitate the sound bites that a lot of people listen to certain news sources and they regurgitate what they're told and they're caught up in fear and anger and polarization. Uh, I have been stereotyped by people because I eat meat. People think if you eat meat then you don't care about the environment. But there are people who eat meat who care about the environment and want regenerative agriculture for both plants and animals and to replenish the soil. That would do more to help the environment than everyone going vegan. Um, so I'm not, I don't fit into a stereotype. Uh, I've had, 
I lean pretty much to the left. I'm a fan of Bernie Sanders in terms of his economic ethics. I'm a fan of single-payer nonprofit public health care that would cost less than the current system in the United States. Uh, I'm a fan of um, real food that's organic and not GMO. I'm not a fan of Monsanto or Roundup, the pesticide that can cause cancer in some people. Uh, I'm not a fan of using harsh chemicals to clean my body. I use non-toxic, hypoallergenic, unscented soap to clean my, my skin and my body and my clothing and my house. I don't use harsh chemicals, which would kill the good bacteria. Um, there are good microbes on our skin and in our gut that help us fight off pathogens. Uh, I walk in the woods every day. I go barefoot sometimes if the ground is clean in terms of being natural, not full of pesticides and man-made chemicals that would harm me. Um, I'm not interested in sterilizing my skin. That's completely unnatural. Imagine to me to put talk to put harsh chemicals on my skin would be kind of like me going into the forest and spraying the trees with alcohol or Lysol or chemical, you know, bleach. That would kill the trees and the insects. Would that make the forest healthy? No, it would not. Why do humans think they're separate from the forest? We are part of nature. I am a human being and my cat is a cat and we are both part of nature. The birds and the squirrels that I see out my window are part of nature. Um, so I don't understand why people think that we are separate from nature. To me, using sanitizers all over my skin and my body, which would dry out my skin and harm me, is just as toxic as if I was going to go into the forest and rub sanitizer all over the dirt and the trees or like a squirrel or like, you know, it would harm the animals and the plants and the insects and the whole ecosystem. Uh, the forest is full of bacteria, fungus, microbes, bacteria, even uh, V-I-R-U-S, uh, if I'm allowed to say that here. There are various kinds of V-I-R-U-S's all over the world, in our bodies, on our skin, everywhere. It's very complicated. I've been watching a lot of science shows about the universe, about the planets and the Earth and the Sun and the Moon and Venus and Saturn and Mercury and all the different planets and it's fascinating how different and unique each planet is and each person is unique and different and I'm somebody who doesn't really admire the current president of the United States but I don't want to waste my time hating any one politician. Um, the military industrial complex is something that upsets me and I'm interested in health. I'm interested in uh, regenerating the soil. I really admire a place in Georgia called White Oak Pastures Regenerative Farm. Um, they have plants and animals that they create and process there and they replenish the earth and the soil and the soil there is teeming with symbiotic health and if you watch a video on White Oak Pastures you'll see um, the amazing the fact that they put goats and sheep together in the same pastures and, and the goats have one parasite that tends to get them and the goats and the wait the sheep and the cow each have different parasites that tend to endanger their health and when you have goats and sheep in the same pasture together it balances out the parasites one gets the other and then the cows and sheep are both healthier which is amazing nature is amazing and I'm not saying that this is a miracle cure-all for everything and that we don't need to do any mainstream medical things like medication and surgery and um, uh, cleaning ourselves, you know, keeping our, our hands clean after we eat or use the bathroom. I, you know, I wash my hands um, before I eat and after I use the bathroom and stuff like that and throughout the day I wash my hands. If I touch a bunch of stuff, I wash my hands before I start touching my face, etc., like stuff like that. But I'm not into over sterilizing everything with harsh chemicals, which would actually kill the good bacteria that's on my skin and that, you know, so I need that to help myself. So to stay healthy and I eat um, kefir and yogurt and I got some raw milk at a farm the other day um, and it's delicious and it's got, it's got lactase and lactose in it so it's easier to digest and it has like vitamin um, 
E, A, C, D, I don't know, a bunch of different K2 or something like that. It has all these like nutrients that pasteurized and homogenized milk tends to, it tends to die. When they pasteurize milk, they heat it up and it tends to kill some of the nutrients and make it harder to digest. So I'm grateful that I'm allowed to drink raw milk and I'm allowed to drink uh, and to eat raw cheese from France and um, I got pastured chicken and um, duck eggs from a local farm. What else did I do? And I got, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, today I ate uh, some ground beef and some beef heart, which is full of nutrients, nutrient dense. I'm a fan of red meat and I cook it in pork lard. And I know that mainstream medical advice says to not do that, that that's bad for you. But it's sad that we are afraid of eating meat, real food like meat, like our ancestors have eaten for hundreds of years. And so I'm a fan of um, low carb um, uh, eating with uh, protein and healthy fats the way nature intended. I don't eat processed vegetable oils. I eat real fat from animal meat and real fat that's in macadamia nuts and walnuts and avocado and like natural fat that's not processed, whether it's plant or animal fat. I do have coconut oil, uh, unrefined, what do you call it, extra virgin coconut oil that's non-hexane or non-heated non up or whatever they call it. And then I have uh, unfiltered uh, extra virgin olive oil that's been, it's unfiltered so it's in its more natural state. Uh, and I have grass-fed butter and pork lard. And so I eat like food like that. Um, fruits, vegetables, nuts, I eat some seeds. I eat a lot of meat. I eat lamb and um, beef and elk and wild boar. And I don't eat a lot of poultry. That's less nutrient dense and it has omega-6, more omega-6 fats in it. Um, ironically, a lot of people are afraid to eat red meat and they think that it's safer to eat chicken or turkey when actually the fats in the red meat uh, tend to be in a better ratio in terms of the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and again, I don't eat vegetable oils like canola oil and sunflower oil and safflower oil, except for the roasted seaweed that I get is sadly roasted in, in the kind of wrong kind of oil that I would prefer not to eat, but I do like roasted seaweed, so that's my one exception that I make. Um, but I mostly eat meat and vegetables and some fruits not tons of fruit because it's got a lot of sugar in it, but it's the natural sugar that comes, you know, on a whole fruit. Um, but I'm feeling more muscular and strong and healthy. Here's what I look like. Um, not that everything about the way you look is what matters in the world, but this is me. Uh, I am in my living room. I'm an art model, and this is what I look like. I exercise every day. Woo! 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm five foot eight and a half, if that matters. Um, so I am an art model and an artist and an open-minded thinker. I'm a fan of democracy and free speech. I kind of lean to the left, um, but I don't want to judge people that lean to the right or lean to the left. I think sometimes people that get too extreme in their left or right leanings tend to judge each other and polarize each other. I would like to go beyond the duality of stereotyping people and um, thinking that if you eat meat that you don't care about the environment is a stereotype. I could easily be a vegan that eats a lot of uh, fast food like french fries and vegan treats, meat substitutes, and yet if I'm eating fast food and junk processed food, I'm not really helping the environment and the agriculture of both plants and animals is very bad for the environment if you do mainstream farming it uses synthetic fertilizers synthetic pesticides even organic farmers use synthetic um, fertilizers which do not replenish the soil i found that i used to think organic farming was really great and then i found out that Organic farms sometimes have very bad soil because they use synthetic fertilizers instead of um, using animal manure and natural, um, like all of the minerals and all of the things that are the, the old fashioned way of farming, like white oak pastures does, um, is much healthier for the earth. So, and the fact that I question some of the mainstream advice of what to, what to do like this, 
you know, the things that we're supposed to do with this. I don't really feel like that's protecting my health, but I follow the rules. I do what I'm supposed to do, partly to be polite and not offend other people, but I can't say that I'm going to pretend like I think that that's protecting me from getting sick. Um, that's what they're telling us to do. The mainstream is telling us to do this. I do not use the uh, stuff on my hands that's harsh. I just use mild soap, like I said before, and then I moisturize with coconut oil on my skin. Um, and I don't have television. I got rid of my cable TV in 2007. I don't even have local TV. I only watch videos. I watch movies. I watch documentaries and science shows and any anything I want to watch on um, the N-E-T-F-L-I-X. I don't even want to say it out loud. <laughs> oh, I got an R-O-K-U -R device uh, that plugs in from my computer to my my dad moved to Florida and retired, and he gave me his big flat screen TV, and so I'm so grateful that I get to plug a device in and watch movies, and no commercials, yay, no commercials. Um, yeah, I love uh, documentaries, and I love uh, fiction movies, and I love science shows and spiritual shows like Eckhart Tolle and, and things like that. I'm um, not really a religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person in a kind of an earthy, natural way. I'm a fan of nature. I like to, I'm not wearing any makeup. I don't shave my armpits. Can't really see, but <laughs> I'm a natural person and we're all, uh, humans are part of the ecosystem. I think we've forgotten that. So I just wanted to say that. So th these are my thoughts for today. Um, and you are entitled to whatever opinions you have, whether you agree with me or you disagree with me. We can agree to disagree or we can agree to agree. And I would like, I wish that humans could go beyond the duality and beyond the polarization of us versus them when it comes to politics, when it comes to eating like vegans versus carnivores versus vegetarians versus omnivores. I'm pretty much an omnivore, but I lean heavy in the carnivore direction. Um, but I'm at liberty to change my mind about anything at any time uh, throughout my lifetime. Uh, I'm 51 years old right now, and I think I look great. I feel healthy. Uh, I my my um, fragile side is my emotional. I'm a bit fragile emotionally, although that's getting better. You know, anxiety, depression, OCD. I might be mildly autistic, synesthesia. I'm an only child. I'm left-handed. Uh, Earth monkey, Scorpio. Um, I'm just me. So there it is. So, um, I sometimes contradict myself. I'm not perfect. Uh, I have a dark side. I'm a little bit Luke Skywalker and a little bit Darth Vader. I admire people who apologize when they're rude and hurt other people's feelings. I also like people who are honest. Uh, I like people who are diplomatic and polite about their honesty, but I do admire authenticity. Authentic ejaculation of my soul, molten orange, liquid glow. Anger takes its toll, blowing status quo. That's some of my poetry. I do poetry and music and spoken word. I'm going to model tonight in a few hours, 6.45 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in uh, the uh, USA Pacific Standard Time Zone. I do this every Friday. I model in my living room. I got the backdrop behind me. I'm going to post tonight. I'm excited about that. Yesterday I modeled for an art school online. Uh, I used to model at 15 different places. Now five or six of them are online. So these are just some of my thoughts. Um, I love the music of Tori Amos and Tom Petty and Edie Brickell. These are some of my favorite musicians right now. And um, I wish you well. Uh, my advice is to follow your heart and follow your common sense and question everything. Do what makes sense to you. Take care of yourself and your friends and your family and your community. I personally do not want to police everybody I see that's doing things, whether I agree or disagree. I don't drink alcohol or smoke any cigarettes. I don't smoke marijuana. And when I see people smoking and drinking, part of me thinks, God, I wish they wouldn't smoke and drink. Like Tom Petty, my favorite musician, he was a, a heavy smoker and he had emphysema. At the time of Tom Petty's death, he was told he had emphysema and he wouldn't quit smoking. And so I love the music of Tom Petty and I always will, but I wish that he hadn't smoked. He would he would still be alive today if he hadn't smoked but the cigarettes, but the fact that he loved to smoke and apparently he liked to drink a lot of sugary soda 
which also would probably made his bones fragile. Who knows? Because um, he had a broken hip at the time of his death, and he needed hip replacement, and he had emphysema. And so there's an example of, I love Tom Petty's music. He seemed like a great person, um, great mind, great sense of humor, a big heart, a big soul, a great songwriter. And yet he smoked and drank, he smoked cigarettes and probably lots of marijuana, which is fine. I personally, I don't want to inhale smoke into my lungs. So I'm kind of a goody-goody two-shoe in that way. I don't smoke or drink. And yet I love the music of Tom Petty. And the fact that he smoked and drank a lot of sugary sodas, I don't agree with that. But that was his choice. And I still love his music. So that's the thing. I don't believe in demonizing people just because they smoke or drink or do drugs or, or have some political idea. If I love their music, I love their music. Uh, so I guess I'm not into boycotting people if, if they're an artist, you know, like Picasso. Uh, I have the same birthday as Picasso, October 25th, and I love the paintings of Picasso. Even if he was uh, a male chauvinist pig who was not very nice to his wives or his girlfriends or whatever, uh, I might not admire that about him. But I still love his paintings. And so I still feel like Picasso made a contribution to the world with his art. Uh, even if his personal life was dysfunctional and not healthy. Uh, I personally, in some ways, I'm kind of selfish. I'm not very generous, and yet I'm a kind person. I donate food to a disabled woman and her son every week. I go to the food bank, and I get food for myself and my boyfriend, and then I share it with this other lady uh, who needs help. And that's something I do that's generous. But in a lot of ways, I'm not very generous. And I'm not, I'm an only child, and I might be a little bit autistic, so I'm not perfect. I'm just sharing these different thoughts. Um, I have a radio show called Goddess Cream Radio, and I'm a fan of free speech and democracy. What can I say? And if you agree with me or disagree with me, that's fine. I think I'm burned out on people judging each other. I'm burned. I don't want to judge people, and I don't want to be judged, and I don't want to go around policing everybody who's doing things I agree or disagree with. Uh, there's a herd mentality of following the herd or rebelling against the herd. I'm trying to do neither. I'm trying to do what makes sense to me for my health, um, and I'm considerate of people around me as well. So thankfully, I don't really miss going out much. I don't care. I like being at home. I like walking in the woods. I go to the grocery store and the food bank. Um, I miss the library, although now I have my ROKU, so I can just watch videos um, without renting free movies from the library. Um, I used to volunteer at the Woodland Park Zoo, um, but that's temporarily on hold because they're changing the rules, and I miss going to the zoo, being around the animals. Some people uh, don't. Some people think zoos are terrible. I think zoos are mostly good. I think that humans we are destroying the habitat of many of these animals. So the animals at the zoo, you could say they're trapped, but you could also say they're protected. So I. I err on the side of the glass being half full. These animals, at least, are not being poached, not being hunted. Uh, if they get an injury or an illness, they get veterinary care, and they get helped, and their offspring get protected. When a little baby is born at the zoo, it's protected from predators, and it's kept uh, safe and gets to hopefully make it to adulthood. I know that in the wild, lions or tigers, only 50% of little baby cubs of lions or tigers even survive because it's pretty harsh. Uh, because of human activity as well as just the natural, you know, the wild of the lions and tigers and natural predators, etc. Um, so there it is. So those are just some of my thoughts for today. And um, have a good day. And I'll link my website below this. Uh, I have a Patreon. You can support me on Patreon. I'm an artist and a model. You can listen to my radio show. And thanks for being here. Bye for now. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Seattle. Any opinion you have is fine with me, whether I agree or not. Bye for now.